today we're going to tackle uh, one of the things that seems to cause people more problems or distress uh, than any other, and that is distressing. Now, the principle of distressing is basically taking a little bit of the paint off, back to the wood or the surface or the colour underneath, so that you have a, a worn or an aged look to a piece. Now, the one thing that you should always remember when you're doing this is no matter what you do, or if it goes wrong, or if it's not quite how you thought it would look, don't worry about it, because at the end of the day, if it does that, just paint it again and try again, or just leave it if that's not, not what you were looking for. So first off, we're going to look at distressing uh, with a sanding block. So this is one of the things people generally use the most. You have different types of distressing. You can take off the, the entirety of the raised edge. Now obviously if you're on a piece of furniture that has no detail on it, um, generally you'll be looking at just edges. So two ways of doing it, you've got a, a sharp edge which is like a right angle here, or you've got a rounded edge. Now when you distress a rounded edge you're always going to get a heavier duty look. So if you sand that, it will take quite a bit off, just because the edge, there is no edge, it's just a surface, so you're literally sanding back down to the wood. Whereas if you go to the, the actual sharper edge, you can see you've got more of a, a detail. This is the sort of kind of distressing, if I do it, is what I go for. I just think it looks a little bit more intricate and gives the piece definition. So again, if you're wanting something a little bit more sort of oh, rustic, you can go... Go for the whole hog, take off as much as you can or as much as you want to. Uh, again, detail just on the edges. It really does depend what effect you're looking for. You can add wax layers to this, you can do all sorts of things just to finish it off. Or you can do this after you've done your waxing effects as we showed on the, the actual grey wax video. Now. There are other ways of doing this. You can use pretty much anything that has an edge to it. So this is a carpenter's blade, uh, one of the probably the most amazing tools I uh, use on a day-to-day -day basis and one I cannot live without. It's brilliant for removing varnish, anything that's corrupted on a surface, gloss paint. You want it off, this thing works, well, it works miracles. So we've got an edge and you want to just take the edge off very carefully. You can get yourself a nice line definition. So depending on what it is you're wanting to achieve, you can see you've got a very fine line coming out there. So you can pick out corners and edges with one of these, or again, for that more French chippy look, if you really want to go for it, you can just scrape it all off. Same with if you want to actually remove paint. This is an amazing piece of kit for that. Now, let's say that's actually the distressed look. I think the only person that's going to distress is probably its owner. So just be careful with it. Nice and gentle, taking the edges off. And finally, another way to get paint off again is to use a wet scourer. Now this is a much more subtle effect, but the one thing to be careful of is you are melting the paint. This is the vintage Authentico. So what you have to remember is when you run over a sponge, it's going to be more off than you actually thought. Purely because the, the paint is melting on the surface, as you can see there. So it looks like there's still quite a bit on. So if you get a bit too carried away, you're going to take quite a lot off. So just remember that. Keep wiping just so you can see how far you've gone. A little more subtle. I don't know if that actually shows any better. So there you have your, your surface sanding, edge sanding round edge sanding, attacking it with a blade, scraping the paint right back down. But remember, all of this can be fixed in a couple of minutes with a paintbrush. So don't worry about what you've done, um, just go for it. 